Okay, folks, well, welcome back. Well, we are with Dee Gillette this morning, and Dee is a fantastic personality and a fantastic artist. So how long ago was it that we actually filmed you, Dee? Oh, Graham, we were both seven years younger and seven years thinner. God almighty. I didn't think it was that long ago. What? That's a, yeah. That, that's amazing. So, almost, almost exactly. I'm pretty sure you released it in the September of 2014. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like just before my life went insanely crazy. Probably. <laughs> that's good. But uh, so how did, how did we actually find out, about, how did you find out about us or did we approach you? How did we <laughs> well, Graham, you called me. Okay. You called me and you called me. Yeah. And then you dropped some <laughs> really important names that were doing CIYL episodes. Yeah. And then I did a little bit of research and I went, oh, I can't not do this. This is an yeah. amazing opportunity. <laughs> And so then we did it. So okay. since so since then, I mean, I've, I've I've looked at your work over the last seven years, and it's actually just become so dynamic. I mean, I can't believe what you're doing. I mean, okay. so how did, how does this all influenced from where we started seven years ago to where you are now? I mean, there's a there's an amazing transition that you've had with your work that's just just, just spectacular. It really is. Tell me about that. Thank you, Graham. Well, I was always about joy. So I was always about colour and joy and celebrating abundance. And I think attaining my Bachelor of Fine Arts had something to do with that because I was surrounded by people doing, you know, existential crises stuff. Oh, yeah. um, you know, get enough 19-year-olds in a room, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And there's enough miserable poor souls and miserable events in the world. That's not what I want to put more of out there. Yeah. I want to put work out there that means everyone has a better day if they see it. So when, when we met the first time, I was working with ink. Don't do that anymore. I was working with textures. Still do that, but I have the most amazing thing now. I have bought myself a stencil cutting machine. So mm -hmm. instead of having to use doilies, Mm -hmm. I can make anything I want. Wow. It's fantastic because I have a, one whole wall of my studio now is just stencils. I have literally wall-to-wall -wall stencils all hanging on their little nails, all just waiting for me to go, oh, no, there's 70 there. None of them are perfect. I need to make a new one. <laughs> but I, 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 I had no idea there was a stencil machine out there. So <laughs> had, where, where do they come from and how much do they cost? Um, well, mine is a Silhouette Cameo 4. Uh, there's ones called Cry Cut as well. Brother does a scan and cut, but I only yeah. know about the Silhouette 4. Yeah. It took me four years to kill my first one. Yeah. Uh, it did a lot of cutting though. And it's just, it's just a wee blade. The machine's only about as big as a printer, just yeah. an ordinary office printer. And there's a wee blade in there. This is a stencil here. Yeah, yeah. So, Look at that. That's amazing. Yeah, right. amazing. Fineness. So amazing. this one, this, uh, I have a story about this stencil. Would you like to hear the story? Yes, please go on, yes. Okay, so you know I'm a girl from Grafton, right? Mm -hmm. So jacaranda trees clearly are a very big part of what is resonant for me. So, okay, we come here to Wynnum and when we bought this house, the first thing we did was plant a jacaranda tree. So I picked a leaf of the tree and I worked in Photoshop and that was the leaf that I used to make exactly this stencil. All right. I used the stencil to make paintings. And then in COVID, when, when the first lockdown happened, I just fell into an enormous pit of depression, just going, oh, well, that's it, isn't it? Everything I've worked towards my entire life is just completely pointless. Everyone's going to be worried about dying. No one will ever again buy a single painting. That's <laughs> it. We're all doomed. Um, <laughs> So what I did in that time when I couldn't have the classroom open and none of the galleries were open, I reinvented myself as a fabric designer. Oh, okay. So I work now with, um, this is some of my fabric here. Yes, look at that. That's just uh, amazing. Upside down. Fantastic. Probably not helpful. Yeah. Yeah, so I work with Pennard and Pennard. Yeah, yeah. Who are an Australian fabric manufacturer. Uh-huh. And they, they make fabrics. Oh, fantastic. Based on my paintings, you've, you've seen this painting. Yeah. So anyway, one of the designs, one of, one of the things I did was a range of jacaranda fabrics because, you know, Grafton, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And um, so the jacaranda fabrics, in the fullness of time, because it, it's a long game, this, 
uh, they arrived in Grafton, in, um, in South Grafton, at Grafton Textiles. And so there's all these jacaranda fabrics and one of the ladies in the sewing circle apparently is also on the management um, committee of the Grafton Jacaranda Festival. And they, unbeknownst to me, had been looking for an artist who did jacarandas well for a long, long time. And apparently what she did is she got a swatch of fabric and went running over to the meeting going, I found our artist and she's a Graftonian! <laughs> so, so I've ended up also uh, designing merchandise for the Grafton Jacaranda Festival, which is all a little bit hush-hush at the moment. So I can't show you any of it, but okay. beautiful. But that's fantastic. I mean, you do, from where you were to where you are now, and, oh. and as I said, we're screening up some of the some of the paintings that Dee has done with the botanicals and the bottle brushes. And I couldn't when I first when I first saw the new work, I was just wondering how on earth you were actually putting these together because it was it's layer upon layer of of, of of color. And I just went, how the how the hell is she doing that? <laughs> You'll have to come spend some time. I'll show you all my secrets, Graham. Yeah, when this uh, it, you're right, it yeah. is layering. So I start this background behind me. This is very typical of where I start now. So I use transparent colours and I have a wonderful thing called a catalyst painting wedge that I refer to as a pebble because it, it looks like a pebble. Mm -hmm. um, and I scrape, I suppose. I, I thin out and move those transparent layers of colour while they're all still wet and run them down the canvas. And that's where I start. And then I stencil and layer and block out parts of that to make the painting. So it's both additive and subtractive in the way I'm working. So what type of paints are you using then? Oh, still the Atelier Interactives. Nothing has okay. changed. Okay. So who else has actually helped you along the way then? Me? Oh, honestly, the, the person who, who I'm proudest of and who helps me most, oh, I mean, there's my wonderful husband, Graham, of course. He's, he's just there all the time doing all the things. But my daughter, Ali, now works with me at Artstree. She has a Bachelor of Fine Arts from RMIT and she's worked with me in the classroom now for three years. And she is the most wonderful teacher. She's building a fantastic portraiture practice for herself. And just having give, given birth to this gorgeous creature who brings so much joy into our students' life and makes them feel that they uh, happy to be painting and it's never too hard and that everything is possible. That's what I'm really, really proud of. That's fantastic. Yeah, children. <laughs> well, I've got uh, I've got a bunch of them and we've got four and a half grandchildren. There's one. Oh, on the excellent. A little girl. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Well, that happened quick. They were only just sitting in the in my palm of my hand yesterday, and now they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies, hey. Time flies when you're wielding paintbrushes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> In the end result, I mean, do you think the colour in your life helped you get ahead with your career? Oh, yes. Yeah, massively. It, um, so what it brought me most of all was a whole bunch of students and pretty much every student I've had and still currently have, they all found me on colour in your life. There's, you know, there's a lot of people meet me. But okay, hi, Dee, that's not 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I don't know how many times they've watched that, but I think it might be a few. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it brought me all the students. And what all those students did was they forced me to be able to articulate what I'm doing very clearly. So it's not enough to just to instinctively choose whatever I'm choosing in terms of colour or mark making. I need to be able to justify that when I'm working with a student. And so... That growth in understanding, I think, is absolutely behind where I am now. That the you know started with inks and then have just kept on developing. Mostly, what I'm interested in is less about the subject and more about how the paint actually interacts. And that was really helped along to uh, Montville Art Gallery picked me up, and they they insisted that I stay a little bit predictable, I suppose, that they wanted my work to sit together in a genre so that people could look at whatever it was and go, oh, yes, that's a DJ Gillette Cox mm -hmm. and pick it up straight away. And so because I started with forest paintings with them, I stayed with forest paintings for that first year. And, of course, I had the attention span of a gnat, I'm hopeless. And so I was 
pretty bored with trees. And so that really pushed me into working with the paint itself. What I could do, and that's what I'm interested in now with the botanical work, I'm contrasting transparency and opacity. And then I'm also contrasting positivity and negativity in the shapes. So that sometimes I'll define, let's say a leaf by painting the air around it. So the color rub from behind comes through and the leaf is formed from those negative shapes. Okay. And then sometimes I'll actually stencil the positive leaf itself. So that those two tensions, positive and negative and transparent and opaque. And that's absolutely fascinating me at the moment. That's incredible. I mean, to, 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 to think and to have met you seven years ago and to see where you are now with your art career, it's been fantastic. Thank you so much, Steve, for coming in and saying hi to us. I know oh. that the, the fans out there will be fascinated about what you're doing, and, and I am for a start, because I think it's amazing what you've done, but I really appreciate your time today. Oh, you're so welcome, Graham. When I, when I do look back, I can see this little, let me show you this, this, this hung in the house where I grew up. So this was a little painting by an artist named Caesar, who I've tried to find them, I have no idea anything, in 1971. Uh -huh. And when I look at all those sort of flight trails coming off that horse, I can really see how much that's influenced me right from the very, very start. Been yeah. amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Lovely to see you, Graham. Thank you.